Hey friends, family, it's good to be together again. This puzzle, when we started out, was just not even at all beginning to look like it was together. We began each week to put a little bit more and more of it together. And as you can see, there's just two little sections left to go into this puzzle. What we've been following is, why did God need to develop the nation of Israel? What was so important about having this nation of Israel? And we have seen that it didn't start in chapter 12 of the book of Genesis. It started way before that. Ephesians says that before the foundations of the earth were ever made, God so loved us that it put together a plan and out of chaos created a plan for humanity to grow and develop. Why? So that we could fall in love with God. God wanted to have a relationship with us, with people, with humanity. So it didn't start with Abram. The, the, this call, the, the, this nation of Israel started before the foundations. We see in the first chapter that God loved us, seen us, knew us to the point that prepared a place for us. So there isn't really a simple answer other than the fact that the birth of this nation began with the idea of love. God loving us and God wanting us to respond in loving him. Now, <laughs> if you were uh, the people that were not on the ark, you might wonder if God loved you. You might wonder even today in, in all that you're feeling, are we loved? Are you loved? Do you feel loved? You may feel that you are so distant from God you could never be loved. But everything that's about this puzzle, this birth of a nation, these first 12 chapters, is a story of love. So let me begin to puzzle us a little bit more. I want to read the 11th chapter, because the 11th chapter is just before next week, where we're going to look at chapter 12. But look with me here. It said, Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sari, his son's Abram's wife, and they went out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. Now listen to that. Terah was taking his family to the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. The days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. We need to begin to understand how the story is even developing with Terah and with Abram. Let's go back a little bit to what we had just studied, that Noah uh, had sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and out of that family, they, they uh, grew and they developed and they, they uh, conquered the land, but there was a point in time that Ham, there was something that happened between him and his father in a tent, and Canaan was cursed. And so then later we saw that there was the Tower of Babel, and from there, these nations began to spread out. And so, Ham's group went down to, to the land of Canaan and Egypt and, and that area. Uh, Japheth went north, as we had heard. But we need to follow the blessings that, that are given to Shem, the oldest. And we begin to think about it. Shem just... They descended a little bit down south of, of where the ark had landed. And, and it is out of this area that we believe, we call it the cradle of civilization. Why? Because out of it is math and science and law and, and how we, we develop this whole moral code to live with one another. And even out of that, there is this 
uh, the sense of many different religions. And so those are the blessings, and, and that is the foundation where Abram is coming from. Abram would have been shaped by all of this. Let me give you a side note. Um, Joshua, at one point, says that uh, he calls Abraham the Hebrew. Where does, where does the word Hebrew even begin to come from? Well, it starts back in Shem's descendants. There is one of his uh, grandchildren is named Eber. We don't know anything about Eber other than the fact that, that he is listed. And, and, but something about his life took on this new name of Hebrew. And, and you can see that Eber turns into Hebrew quite naturally. And so I, I, I want to just as a side note, what are you doing in your life that at some point may pop up later on in a generation or two below you? What you do is significant. You may not think your life at all is significant. Eber, yeah. What did he care? What did he know? But because of his right living, an entire nation was named after him. We call them the, the Israelites, true, but we also call them the Hebrews. And so, you know, just, just chew on that for a little bit. Well, let's get back to, to this puzzle. I'm kind of intrigued with, with Tara in chapter 11. There's... If it only started with Abram, I don't think the story would be told as well as it is in this chapter 11. There is something driving Tara to go to this, to this land that's wild. He's moving from the city of the Chaldeans, the, the Ur. It, it, it's, it, it's a modern city for the time, and he's, he's apparently very wealthy. So what would drive him, other than a sense of a calling to go to this new land, and he is specifically taking Abram, his barren wife Sarai, and Lot. Now, something happens along the way. What happens is they get to Haran, and we don't know if Terah runs out of steam, if he just gets tired, or maybe his health is giving out, or he just decided he's gone far enough and he can lay the mantle of this trip on to his son Abraham. If he was called, here's what I want you to, to understand. Whatever God wants and lifts people up, if they can't fulfill it, God will finish whatever was started. So if for whatever reason, uh, you know, you run out of steam yourself. God will finish the race for you. God, God will complete the task that needs to be done. But wouldn't it be neat if you were the one to see the task being finished? And, and that's, that's kind of the question of really what happened to Tara. Because we see that Abram, very late in life at this point, moves into this new land and begins to explore. But see, this is the puzzle. This is the puzzle that's beginning to unfold. All the pieces are interwoven. It goes to back to, to Noah. It goes further back to, into Adam and Eve. And, and we talked about the in-between time. But all of this is designed to show God's love for us and that there is a plan out of all of this. The plan is to, he, to see that the children of God are redeemed. In other words, we are forgiven. There is a path created for us to be back in relationship with God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that, that time and distance never bothers you. You, you can work through any of the mishaps that, that come along as Satan is seeking to destroy and to, to derail the good plans, your plans are better than, and your plans always come out. And it's your plans that, that bring us into the situations in which we are now. Lord, we thank you 
that by hearing even this message, that your love is being shown and being showered upon each one that is listening today. And we ask that you continue to bless us, continue to show us ways that we can be in relationship with you since you first loved us. Help us to love you. We put this into your holy name. Amen. See you next time. Next time, the pieces of the puzzle will be all put together. We'll see you then.